Last time on Side Stories. In the midst of our travel towards the nearest town in Zogun, we were <sighs> chased down by a group of orcs representing the Darkfin Marshes. More specifically, uh, those serving an evil god. But we were saved by a true champion. Broxarg and the Blades of Zogun surprised them and were able to deal with them quickly, providing us a brief respite and safe travel to the nearest town. Upon arriving, we took our dearly departed friend Luna, and with the magics of Broxarg, some pieces from each of us pulling together our money as well as our trinkets, we were able to revive Luna back to this wonderful world of reverie. Broxarg also provided us safe travel to the best of his ability as he was continuing to take rides across the borders to help protect all of Zogun. He provided us five of the swords of Zogun to travel with us and assist us as we move forward. Sadly, as we continued our course towards Gar's watch, we were surprised by an ambush masquerading as travelers with a broken down cart. The Koldarians surprising us a new representative named Bodo the Stinger merged with Wavern through some sick magic curse or experimentation. During that time, four of the blades of Zogun fell, but they helped us move forward, defeating Bodo. And with the last words of Bodo before his final passing on into the next life, he told us to be aware that a true wicked one was following us. Mawu the Wicked, a representative of high order from Kuldar, one that struck a cold cord across Eska. Yet, we have not wavered, and we will continue our course as we continue to push forward towards the safety provided by the Asia Brotherhood and seek to find Eska arriving safely. Side Stories, Episode 18, Sorceress of Aloria, Part 10. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Taverns and Caverns Side Stories, everyone. This is your Dungeon Master, Haphazard DM, and I am with our returning guest, Mr. Jacob Life, Casper, the Wicked, Rodimus, and Kai. Welcome back, everyone. Let us see where the story takes us and let us pray and hope that our players survive whatever I'm about to throw at their asses. <laughs> <Just joking. laughs> I am ready for death. Kick, 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 kick. But last time, our party, they were able to gain some supplies after meeting with a half-orc by the name of Broxarg of the Octatic Divine. And if we remember correctly... Broxarg was a lord, a member of a town known as Galakron's End, and he is a high cleric, a, a war priest, if we call it, here in the nation of Zogun. And he was leading a platoon or a group of soldiers that basically traveled along the borders to protect Zogun from any dangers that might come across the borders from the Darkfin marshes with the orcs that live in the swamps that followed Roktar, the evil god of conquering and war. But other than that, we do know that the party, as thank you, Jake, for mentioning and doing such a wonderful recap, we do know that they fought another Koldarian soldier by the name of Bodo the Stinger, who was part wyvern with his poison but before he died he mentioned to the team that mawu the wicked was on his way which definitely scared eska and shook her to her from her toes up to her shoulders and within seconds from hearing that name and i did mention that mawu the wicked he is the general in the koldarian army that led the koldarian army into the nation of aloria and conquered it within a few weeks. He is the general that did so. Now, there's several generals that work for the emperor of Koldar, but he is one of the many generals. So that 
kind of shows you how powerful that this individual is and why Eska was shaking in her boots after hearing the name. And she personally knows this specific general because he, again, he is the one that conquered her nation. So that's what happened last time. Before we begin, I want to mention to our listeners that our party, they're still traveling westwards towards the decaying waste, trying to get to the Azure stronghold. However, they still have much land to travel. They have to get to the west side, the west portion of Zogun. Our party was able to eventually come across a village known as Crete. And after the village westwards, they have to reach a fortress known as Gar's Watch. And if we remember the last time, there were five Zogunian soldiers that traveled with our party. However, because of the last battle, four of the five were defeated, unfortunately. And now we only have one. But that last remaining Zogunian soldier has mentioned to the party that going to Gar's Watch, which is a fortress along the western border of Zogun, going to the decaying waste, would be the best place to gain reinforcements and to regain some supplies because that fortress is ran by Zogunian's soldiers. So that's going to be a very safe place for the party to be, especially now that they have a Zogun soldier with them. And Broxarg had mentioned that that was a place that they would probably uh, seek out to rest at for a night or two while they were on their travels. They would be safe in Gar's watch for the time being. But we are now in between the village known as Crete and the fortress on the western border of Gar's watch. The party is a few days away from Gar's watch. You have been traveling for many days now on foot. You were able to regain supplies from the village of Crete And as you're all traveling for the last many days after doing battle with Bodo, the stinger, it has been peaceful. It has been quiet. You have come across only a few travelers from time to time on the main roads. I'm assuming the party has decided to stay, stick to the main roads for now, but nothing has really jumped out at the party since then to really frighten you or worry you, but Eska is still on her guard. Every individual you come across, Eska has her hand on her katana, ready to unsheathe it for the most part. But we're going to say that we'll be starting today's session. It is about one o'clock in the afternoon. You all just took a break and ate a delicious lunch that you were able to pack from Crete And after eating lunch, you're back on your feet. You're walking the main roads. It is a nice day out. There is a breeze, low 70s, and the sun is out. The clouds are out. It's not too cloudy, though. It's a perfect day. As you're walking, though, on the main road, we'll go ahead and say we'll give this opportunity for anyone to bring up any topics or anything like that before we continue onwards. Is there anything anyone wants to do before... I push the story forward. I can't think of anything. Okay. Well, that's fine. I can go and push the story forward. Eska is walking along the main road. Everyone, like I said, you should see your characters on the new map. As you're walking along the main road, the Zogonian blade or the the Zogun sword, the soldier that's with you. At this point in time, it's been many days. You've had the opportunity to talk with him from time to time. He is a friendly individual he's not one to really ignore you he seems to enjoy the company Uh, again he is friendly for the most part and a skilled individual with the way of the long sword he knows what to you guys have seen him practice during your breaks and you can tell he is a devoted soldier to zogun not a particular individual you want to become enemies with now he's not anything special like Bodo the Stinger with transformations and whatnot, but he is a very skilled soldier and he is good at what he does. But as you're traveling, the soldier, he's going to speak up. And at this time, I'm going to say, a second, I need to make a name for him. Let's do a quick name generator. We'll say th- during your travels, you've known him. He has called himself a deg, A-D-E-G, a deg. And a deg speaks up. He's looking around and he looks over at the rest of you. He's going to look over at the closest one to him at this time, which is Kai. Kai, you're walking in front of him slightly. And he looks over at you, Kai. Hey, Kai, tell me, once we get you all to the Azurian Brotherhood, what are you going to do with yourself? I hear 
you're getting uh, paid quite a bit of coin for this adventure. After you collect your coin, though, what you gonna do with yourself? Me, personally? Yeah. I'll probably just go on an adventure. Maybe see some sights. Ah, where are you thinking about heading? Up, up north towards the, the crazy forest in Osea? Or are you going to head back towards east, towards, you know, Estelle de Wien with the elves? You know, Zogun does have quite a few pretty sceneries and stuff. You should definitely check out Zogun when you get the time. I'll definitely visit Zogun again. I'll probably first head home to Osea. Ah, that's where you're from, Osea, huh? Tell me, are there really all that many druids up there in that forest? All I hear about is Rava's Grove and how it's protected by wardens and many druids. Tell me, do you know any druids? Are they assholes? Some of them can be, yes. But uh, uh, I, I know quite a few good ones myself. Ah, I've never met a druid. I just hear that they're very fancy when it comes to nature. <laughs> Most druids I hear don't like steel. And here in Zogun, as you can see, we're all about the steel. <laughs> I guess that's why we hear a lot of bad things with them. <coughs> Excuse me. I probably should shut my mouth. Druid might be hearing me talk right now. Might be casting a spell or two. You know, that pollen type shit. <laughs> what about you, Eckerd? What about yourself? What are you going to do? We could use a man like you here in Zogun. Mm. <laughs> well, I appreciate that call, but these old bones have been dedicated to helping to progress people who are looking to venture and have safety. <sighs> As much as I enjoy Zogun, I, at a bare minimum, maybe I uh, could take up some residence at some point there in Galakron's End. Uh, I feel a special calling to that location. Ah, yeah, there's a lot of good things there in Galakron's End. That's a, that's a mighty fine town. However, they're, they're ran by many lords. I've never seen a town ran by so many lords before, but there is a story to it. You know... For those that don't know Galakron's End, that place was created by a, a group of individuals, adventurers, just like yourselves, that defeated a black dragon by the name of Galakron. And because of this, this feat, our lord, our leader at Laroque Stronghold provided them land of their own. And that's where they came up with a town known as Galakron, then you all should definitely check it out. It's a great place to be. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, depending on how well this goes, that might very well be a wonderful place to travel to. <laughs> uh, but until then, we will continue to push forward. We will find my brotherhood of the Asiers and, well, for lack of a better term, prepare ourselves for whatever is ahead. Yes. We will have to. I can't. I still feel bad. Four of my brothers died against two of those Kodarian soldiers. I've never seen such soldiers with such strength, such agility before. That is not, that is not normal. What they're doing, I can't imagine what kind of place Koldar is. Truly a good question. I've only seen opponents as formidable as this is my days battling in the the decaying wastes. This is uh, truly a, a saddening affair. I'm so sorry to hear of the loss and to have been a part of the loss of your brothers. They were it's wonderful it's, people. This is all right. Uh, we have a saying here in Zogun that, you know, dying in battle brings glory after death. So, my brothers, I may miss them, but they died a worthy death, and now glory is upon them. They are with the octatic divine, living an afterlife that they deserve. However, there is much to be done. I don't want to think too much of their deaths, because I don't want to make myself, I don't want to burden myself with that depression. What about you there, Goliath, what are you going to be doing after this? Me, I plan on heading back to the Strider Valley. 
going to River Hall, spending as much coin as I can, ah! buying as much <laughs> ale as I can. That's, and... that's yes, I see. I see what you're saying. And then I plan on spending my days at Dagger Lake just drinking. That sounds like a good old time, a grand time. But you know, you, you have shown to be pretty skillful yourself. If you ever find yourself in Zogun again, you have to come by to the Rope Stronghold and check it out. We could do definitely use people like you guys from time to time. The pay isn't bad either. If pay is nice, that sounds good. Yes. And there's a lot of drinking. <laughs> <laughs> What about you, Turtle? Are you going to head back to the swamps of the Darkfin marshes? Oh, the swamp is nice, but I'm hoping that Esco still take me up on that offer and teach me, hone my skills, improve on my craft. Ah, you want to practice, continue practicing your craft. I understand. It's like me with the long sword, my steel. I must practice it every day. With you, it's with your magics. What, what is it again you call yourself? You're not a wizard, right? No, I'm a warlock. Ah, uh, that's what it was, a warlock. I, I don't really understand the differences between warlocks, wizards, and whatnot. Now, we do have, you know, many of our soldiers know how to cast magics, but it's a little different than what I've seen you do, my friend. Uh, the warlock, so what, what does that entail? Are you... Are you like a, a cleric? Do you worship a god? What, what, how's that work? Um, my benefactors just gave me gifts to bring justice to this world. Yeah, you, you've said that word many times before, my friend. Justice. What is justice to you? Justice is correcting those that anger you. Oh, that's what you call justice, huh? Well, I mean, remind, remind me to never anger you, my friend. Justice is... Um, actually, I shouldn't speak anymore. My <laughs> benefactor might get a little angry. Ah, oh, well, I won't ask any more questions then, my friend. <laughs> and while he's speaking with Yalar and the rest of you, Everyone make perception checks. You Good said old, perception? Yes, please. Good old Adeg. Not my best, but not my worst. All right, Yalar with a 10, Echo with an 11, Kai with a 13, and Sam with a 10. Oh, man, everyone's rolling fairly low. We're middle ground, all right? That's <laughs> right in the middle. It's Luna, a 20-sided die. Luna with a nine. So the highest is Kai with a 13, which, I mean, this is going to make sense. He's the ranger. And he has kind of been... He has been keeping his wits about him with everything that's been going on. So we'll go ahead and say Kai with a 13. You do spot something that no one else spots. As you're walking along the main path, Kai... As you hear Adeg speaking with you and your allies, you do notice something that no one else seems to notice, not even Eska. Luna does not see this whatsoever. This is more sight than sound at this point in time. On the main road traveling, on the dirt path, Kai, you notice there is what looks to be like a small body lying on the dirt, along the dirt road, not on it, but along the side of the dirt road. And from there, you don't really see much else, but further in the distance, you do see something that looks like a traveling wagon or something along the road. You just can't tell. You're fairly far from that, but you're closer to this small like body. You can't tell what it is. It does look like a small body though, along the side, up in the grasses near some bushes. Will you re- do you relay this to the squad or do you keep this to yourself? Oh, yeah, I'm relaying it. Okay. They're going to know. Okay, so as you spot this body, how do you act? How, what do you say? What do you do? Hey, guys, we got a, a body off to the side and it, what looks like a wagon on the road. As you say so, what, how do you all respond to Kai's comment? Oh, no, not another wagon. We must be wary. Couldn't be another trap. 
They've done it before. About how far up ahead is it? It's only about 40 feet or so. Now that Kai has pointed it out, you all, now that you're really paying attention, I'll give you the advantage. If you can see, you don't have to make a re-roll. You already have rolled before. I'll just give you your advantage roll. Everyone rolled higher, 17s and 19s and whatnot. You all can now see the small body along the side of the road. We'll say on the map, we'll say it's, it is near this, this boulder that's directly in front of you here where I'm pinging. We'll go ahead and say the body is there. To represent it, I'm not going to say there's, I'm not going to put an actual body. I'll just put a marking, a circle. The body is up along the grass, some bushes, and this boulder along the side of the road. Uh, do you all continue forward to get closer to the body, or do you kind of just, you know, stand there and look around, or what are you doing? I see that Sam is making a stealth check with a 22. Sam, your, your stealth check is very high, so I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, what are you doing with that stealth check? So because of the fact that we've already been attacked once while aiding or passing um, a wagon, I, I want to just go into like, it looks like where, where I'm at right now, there's like a bit of shrubbery and some trees and things. I yes, want to try to trees and some shrubbery along the sides of the road right now. Yes. Yeah. Can. I want to try to kite that as much as I can until we can get closer to see so if anything does pop up, I at least have an advantage of not being seen. Okay, perfect. You rolled a really well on yourself with the 22. So we're going to go ahead and say, from what you can tell, Sam Laundren is hidden. He is up against the bushes, the trees. He's along the shadows of what the trees and bushes provide as much as possible while you're in the middle of the field in the middle of daytime. But you are fairly hidden alongside the road. Everyone else, what are you doing? Uh, I was planning on to um, draw out the my shadow blade. And, okay, so you're preparing yourself for a battle. Okay. Yeah, and I was going to walk up to investigate. As you do so, before you go, is Yalar Eska is looking around, and she has her hand on the hilt of her katana, and she unsheathes it rather quickly, based off your prior experience with wagons along the sides of the road and whatnot. And she looks at Yalar and at everyone else. Wait, Yalar, do not, do not go up there by yourself. And she looks at the rest. Is anyone going to accompany? We should probably spread out slightly. Let's not all stand together in, in case it's an ambush. Eckhart, he uh, kind of in the middle of the walk, he had started nibbling a little bit on some, uh, some hard jerky. <clears throat> I couldn't have said anything a better idea. Let's spread out some. Let's make sure we're in as wide of a formation as possible. And let's keep our eyes about us as we start to move closer upon the scene. All right. With that, Yalar, are you going to walk up towards this body or whatever along the side of the road? Eska is going to go a little closer with the Zogunian blade along the side as well. Yalar, go ahead and say, if you're walking up close, let me know when you're doing so, and I'll describe to you what you find, what you see, what this is. All right. I am straight, going straight for it. All right. As you cautiously walk up towards this body of sorts along the side of the road, go ahead and make me either a perception or investigation. I'm going to have Luna next to him, and she's going to roll for hearing and smell. Okay. Perception. Can uh can Sam has it have his bow drawn just in case? Yeah, yeah. If you want to have your weapon readied, yeah, by all means. All right, Yalar rolled a 15 on investigation and Luna 21 on perception. Luna, as she's walking up alongside the road with Yalar following the path towards the body. Yalar, as you get closer to this, uh, I'd say probably about 15 feet away you quickly see what this object, body, thing, whatever it is along the side of the road is. It looks to be like the corpse of a child. Luna can smell with a 21 blood, and Luna begins to sniff, 
And there are blops, or I should say, there are spills or drops of blood leading ahead of the road from this child's body towards that wagon in the distance, which is about 40 feet away from you now. Do you get closer than 15 feet, you are to the child's body? Yes, yes, I do. How close do you get? I just need to know if to describe what you see. Uh, I want to get close as I can. Okay, it's so about five feet away. So go ahead and place yourself right next to the circle that I identified to be the child's body. And as you are, you step forward. Uh, we'll keep the same investigation check. You get closer to this child's body. And as you look down, it seems to be that it is the body of a little girl who is just lying there along the side of the road. She seems to be dressed in normal traveling like clothing. She's, you would assume she's to be at least the age of 10, nine or 10, very young. However, her, her skin has gone pale. If you touch her body at all, it's cold. You can tell that she has been there for at least a couple of hours now. And as you inspect the body, you do notice those drops of blood that are on the main road that Luna definitely smelled is coming from the little girl's body. And as you investigate with your investigation, you see that the poor child seems to have been struck down in the chest with a weapon. So we look down, clenching my shadow blade. I'm going to call out to the others. Some sick bastard just killed a child. About how old do you think? Eckhart will start to move in closer. While you're doing so, Eska, she is going to make a roundabout. She's going to get off the main portion of the road along the side, closer to where Kai is along the side of the road. And she's keeping an eye out. She wants to make sure that you, while you are investigating this body that you know, your defenses are up. There's a gunny and blade. He's going to kind of keep a distance as well. He doesn't want to get too close in case it is a trap. But as Eckerd gets closer to Yalar, Eckerd, you are able to see exactly what Yalar sees. You do see that it is a young child that has been struck down. Now, the, the wound is in the chest. You don't know what could have caused it unless you do a, a medicine check of some kind. I'll do that. Poor child. You didn't even get a chance to enjoy the time. <sighs> he kneels down and... Uh, whew, whew. Right, I will go give you an advantage on this just because the body is much smaller mm -hmm. and the body is not wearing any armor. It's a lot easier to decipher what could have done so. So I'll give you the mm -hmm. advantage on this. It makes sense. Yeah. So with a 23, as you inspect the child, it is... A, ho a hobgoblin child. Again, most of the races in Zogun are, are goblinoids of some kind, whether it be a goblin, a hobgoblin, uh, and whatnot, bugbear, what's, whatsoever. But again, Zogun, the hobgoblins here are mostly good, and you know they're just like any other society. So yeah, it's still she's still a, a child that you would you know feel remorse for and whatnot. It's not like she's a monster or anything in this world. Anyways, I know some world's goblins are, are monsters, but in this case, not that is not the case. But as you inspect the hobgoblin child's body, you see that the middle of the chest, there is a flesh wound that was made by a weapon that seems to be man-made. You see there is a large stab wound that basically went right through her, the middle of her chest, through the back of her of her body. And as you look at the wound, it seems to be the size of a blade that might be a great sword. Eckert just kind of peers over Yalar towards a dag. Uh, I feel as if I have poor news. This is a small child, small little girl, likely from here. Um, she's been hit with a weapon that no child should have to be in fear of. Uh, nothing that should be used in this way. True brutality. I am unsure whether or not this has anything to do with our travels and our plans, but I believe if we push forward, we will likely see 
much of the same devastation that we have before. So be on guard, everyone. The Zogun soldier, Adeg, he's going to step forward now. He sheathes his blade, knowing that all of you have your weapons out and are on guard. And he's going to walk up towards the child next to Yalar. And he looks down at her and he just kneels down and he takes his hand to close her eyes. And he just quickly does a prayer for her. And he just, by the gods, who would do such a thing to a child? Whoever did this shall be punished. And he looks over towards the main road. And he also spots the wagon as well in the distance. And he's going to stand up. (sighs) Whatever we find near the wagon, I'm sure it's going to be the same. (sighs) Be on your guard, everyone. For whoever vile fiend did such a thing could still be nearby. If there is no one here of danger, once we search the wagon, I might take some time to bury the poor child. If you do not mind. I have no worries, and I am not bothered. Please do as you would. So with that being the case, he is going to look at the rest of you, and he's going to make a nod. Uh, looks like the rest of the team is in agreement to continue forward down the main road to follow and see what what this wagon may hold. Does everyone begin to make their way closer to the wagon? Yes. yes. All right. So as you all make your way down the path, I'm going to go ahead and draw the wagon. I know I said it's about 40 feet, but the map is almost over. I don't want to have to pull up a new map, so we're just going to do this. So go ahead and move your characters back a few squares, and I'm going to draw the wagon. We'll just say the wagon is up along the side of the road where I just drew. So everyone go ahead and make your characters somewhat in a new formation based off where the wagon is on the map that I drew. So who is leading this investigation towards the wagon? Yalar, you seem to be making your way up towards the wagon first. The, The drops of blood do not stop. They continue all the way up to the wagon. Yalar, how close do you get to the wagons? Because it seems like you are walking, you know, up ahead of the group. I'm feline towards it. I am on a mission. All right. Make me a perception check. And if anyone else wants to make a perception check, go ahead and do so. So uh, Sam is kind of chilling still in the Sam's bushes over. Well, We'll just keep your same stealth, the 22. You're still trying to be stealthy with your bow out drawn, I'm assuming? Uh, Yeah. Okay. All right. We have Yalar with a 19 perception, Eckerd with a 12, (laughs) Sam with a 4, Kai with a a 20, Luna with a 7. So as the party continues forward towards this wagon, Yalar... And Kai, you instantly see a couple more bodies along the side of the front of the wagon. You can't see what's behind the wagon with the way you're standing. The horses or oxen or whatever animal that was driving this wagon are now gone. There are no animals in sight. But you do notice that there are two bodies up along the front end of the wagon. And there is, or I should say, there are pools of blood beneath both of these bodies. And what you guys see, they seem to be adult bodies, both male and female hobgoblins. They're not in armor. They're just wearing regular clothing, peasants of what you might think. But based off that, you can't really notice much else other than the two bodies. However, Kai and Yalar, not only do you see this, we'll see Eckerd set. Eckerd also sees this, what I just described. Casper or Sam, not so much. Sam, you don't really see your current vantage point, your stealth, but you can't see what they're seeing at this time based off your current position. But all after you guys all see these bodies, these two bodies, the two of you, Yalar and Kai, you also hear something. Everyone else does not hear this. Yalar and Kai, you hear sound coming from behind the wagon. The wagon has four wheels attached to it, just like a basic wagon. There's a tarp that goes over the wagon. 
that would protect anyone that was in it from the weather and whatnot. So you don't really see what's on the wagon due to the tarp that's over it. But you do hear this grinding sound as if someone was grinding steel up against stone. Yular and Kai, you both hear this behind the wagon, but you don't see anything. What do you do? I will look at Kai and to see if he noticed the sound as well. But Yalar has this look that you really haven't seen before. Almost a look of rage in his eyes. All right. Uh, Kai, you hear Yalar look at you. You see the look on his face. You also hear like this grinding behind the wagon. You can't see what's in the wagon or what's behind it, but you hear this grinding that Yalar hears. What do you do? First off, obviously, Yalar is very angry if I can hear the look he's giving me. (laughs) You can fucking hear it! (laughs) You probably could. Uh, I'm gonna... I'll look back at Yalar, and I will... I'll nod, because my idea is I'm going to move around the side of this wagon and get a vantage point to see the front of it and see what's making the noise. Okay. So, before you do so... Everyone, click on your characters and roll. Oh, I guess for, I'm not roll for initiative for now, just just to do it in case something happens here. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Remember to click on your character first before you hit it. Yes. Yeah, Yalar with a twenty-two, Kai with a thirteen, Sam with a six. Big money, big <laughs> money, no whammy. Echo yes! with eighteen, nice. Let's go and roll for Eska. Eska's got. A 10. So she'll be going fourth. Sam with a six. Luna, again, goes on the same turn as Kai. We'll say that our friend Adek goes at the same time as the other NPC, Aska. That way it's a deg. I'm sorry, not a deck, a deg. That way it's easy to keep. And then you make a roll for whatever sound you might be hearing. All right. So the turn order goes Yalar, Eckerd, question mark, Kai, Eska, and Adek, and then Sam. So Yalar, I guess, would have the first opportunity to go. Yalar, at this point, with you and Kai noticing this, do you you notice Kai is making his way around to try and get a better view? But what are you doing, Yalar? Are you going to try and get ahead of Kai? Are you going to try and go at the same time with Kai? You seem to be fairly upset. I will be going the same time with Kai. All right. So we'll go ahead and say that you'll be moving up at the same time with Kai on his turn. Eckert, you notice Yalar and Kai, they're going to be making their way around the wagon to see what's at the front. You have a bit more of a better vantage point based off where you're standing. You can kind of see more of the front of the wagon, but just you still can't see enough of it to really know what's going on. And you did not hear the sound that the two of them did. However, you do see the two bodies that are lying there. Well, at that point, Eckert channel, uh, you kind of see him move his hand around the, the point of where the hilt for his halberd is. And he kind of channels a, a little bit of uh, divine magic. Ugh. Penella, keep us safe. And he casts Bless, but he is casting it at second level. Okay. Which is going to allow him to target an additional uh, creature. So he is going to cast Bless on four people. Uh, That will be Sam, Yalar, Kai, and myself. All right. And with that, he will just kind of continue his kind of walking about uh, over uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit, greater around the curvature he's not trying to get closer um he's really trying to kind of keep that initial bit of distance whoever is behind that come forward show your face there is movement from inside the wagon eckard you're gonna be the first one to spot it due to you standing on the side of the wagon now sam you're still on the opposite side of the wagon of eckard still hidden in the bushes So you really don't see what's stepping out. But as a figure finally makes itself known, 
What you see step out from the front of the wagon, Eckerd. There seems to be an individual humanoid, somewhat, actually, let's take it, not somewhat, extremely tall, about seven feet, fully decked out in red and golden armor. It is the same armor that you have seen many of the Koldarians wear throughout this entire adventure that you have been on. But as the seven-foot individual steps out from the wagon, he seems to be carrying this whetstone that he is sharpening his greatsword on. And as he steps out, he seems to be snacking on something. He's got, he's got something in his mouth. You can see there's like a stick hanging out of his mouth or something, some form of food, maybe beef jerky. You can't tell, but he's munching on something. And he just steps out of the wagon while he's sharpening his great sword. And as he looks over at you, I'm going to pull his body out. I'm just going to use the last picture I use. It's not a dragonborn, guys. I know it's a dragonborn picture. I'm just using this. He looks human at this point. As he steps along the side, he just continues to chew on whatever food he might have potentially stolen from this wagon. And he looks over at Eckert, and then he turns his head to look at Yalar and Kai, along with Eska, and he could spot Luna as well as Adeg. He does not see Sam just yet, because Sam is hidden. And he just continues to chew. And as he sharpens his blade even more, he looks over at the, the party, and he just gives you this grin. He has golden, like this golden plated helmet with this heavy armor on. He slowly tosses the whetstone to Eckerd's feet. So, you are the ones who slayed my men. This pathetic lot. And as he looks over at you, Eckerd, he spots Eska in the back. And he points at her with his left hand, still holding onto the great sword with his right. You, traitor, have been a pain in my side for many months. It is about time you come home with me. Drop your weapons and I shall allow your friends to live. However, if you dare lift those weapons against me, know this, Eska. All of your friends today shall die a slow and painful death, just like these travelers before you. Oh, before I forget, I'm sure you've seen the bodies I've laid as artwork for the eyes of you weaklings. <laughs> I have not finished my art here. Allow me to share the final piece. And with his left free hand, he reaches into the wagon. He's still standing close enough to the entrance of the wagon. He grabs something from the wagon. He pulls it out. And what it looks like, Eckerd, you're the first one that can see it. Make me a perception check. All right, you have an 11. We'll go ahead and say, because you have the current best visual of the current situation, you definitely can see what he's pulling out at this point. You see it before anyone else does. What he's grabbing onto, Eckerd, is he's grabbing onto the ankle of what looks like to be another child. He grabs the ankle and he pulls this poor child from the wagon and he holds the child upside down. And Eckerd, as you see the child, you can see that this child as well has been gutted, just like the prior child. This child looks to be much younger than the child you came across you minutes ago. Would do such a horrendous atrocity. The man looks over at Eckerd. At this point, Yalar and Kai, Eska, and Adek, you all can see this. Sam, he's still on the opposite side of the wagon, so you're not seeing this just yet. But he laughs towards Eckerd. And as he does so, he just throws, or I should say, tosses this poor child's body, not at Eckerd necessarily, but onto the road for everyone to see. And he just looks down at it. 
I think the final pieces of art will be your dead bodies, your corpses along the main road, unless Eska surrenders herself and follows me back to a shy. And he looks over at Eska. The choice is yours, my friend. And he gives her this wide grin. And as he does so, you all can already tell this is Mawu the Wicked. This is the general. He looks much as much as he has not transformed into anything yet. He looks intimidating. He has a very intimidating presence, despite looking like a human that's at seven feet tall. He is somewhat, somewhat muscular. He he doesn't seem to be as buff as some of the other soldiers that you fought, but there's just something about him. There's an evil like aura just emanating from me, from him. Eckerd, do you have, any like sense evil or anything of the sorts? Cause you were a cleric, anything uh, like that, that would be passive in, in this case. I don't have anything like that. I think that's more paladin aligned, but I'm fairly certain. I mean, at this point, Eckert is filled with holy rage. You have done atrocities that will earn your place in the beyond beast. Now, now, my friend, I come from a nation that is driven by power, strength. Here in Tyrester, I have seen nothing but foolishness, foolish weakness. And he points over at Eska. The woman you protect has done such foul deeds as this. Don't allow her to fool you. (laughs) Isn't that right, my dear friend? And he looks towards Eska at this point. And as he does so, you know, she has this look of of anger in her face. She, She has her hand tightly on the grip of her katana as if she's ready to rush at this guy to strike her down. And she's somewhat quiet about it. She doesn't really respond back to Mawu at this point. But he just looks at the rest of you. Again, my friends, you are protecting someone just as evil as me. Think about it. She has killed many more than myself. (laughs) Much more innocent lives have fallen thanks to your friend there. If this is what you think is is vile. Ask your friend what she has done. Hmm? (laughs) Yeah, does anyone, is anyone doing anything at this point? It's still his turn while he's laughing, but I'm giving you the opportunity to to say anything or potentially uh, nod at one another to kind of plan what you might be doing. Uh, What is the party doing while this guy is just ranting on? Sam's pissed in the bushes because he can't see anything. <laughs> he just this hears guy, everyone. He this just guy's hooping everyone. and hollering, and I can't see nothing. <laughs> I is sitting there wondering how many arrows he can fire all at once. <laughs> all right. So uh, as he does so, it looks like you haven't told your friends what you've done, Nesca. Why don't you explain to them the vile things you have done? done for Koldar. And at this point, she she gets a little impatient now with Mawu. And at this point, she just, she looks at him and she just yells out, liar! I did not kill like you. I was forced to kill innocents. I didn't do so willingly. You hold our family and our loved ones as prisoners to make us do what you Koldarians deem necessary. And as she says this, he just chuckles to himself. <laughs> but you are still given a choice whether we held your family as captives or not. The choice was yours to poison a whole village of innocent people. Was it not? And at this point, she... Uh, enough talk! This is it, Mawu! Your life ends today! And she is going to prepare herself for combat. And he just looks at, at her... Mm. And do your friends agree with you here? Do you all wish to fight me? Mawu the Wicked. I am one of the great generals of Koldar. You dare challenge me? And he's going to look at all of you. Are all of you 
ready to fight? Are all of you about to jump this guy? Or are you kind of wondering what the fuck he's talking about with how Eska killed and poisoned some people? Oh, I'm ready to fight. Eckert narrows his glance at him. I have not said this since the days I battled on the decaying wastes, but your end will be here along the roadside like a carcass for carrion birds to pick at as you deserve. You do not belong into this life where Penella's hands have been placed on all those you have wore down. I will have your head. <laughs> as weak as you fools here in Tyrister are, you do bring me some joy knowing that you are not cowards. At least I can finish my artwork this day with the rest of your bodies. So be it, fools of Tyrister. Show me Mawu the Wicked, how powerful your devotion is. And with it being his turn, you can see now, Eckerd, he begins to slowly step forward while he is laughing. He holds both of his hands to the side of his body, his right hand holding this great sword in one hand, and his left hand just open palm as he's walking towards Yalar, Luna, Kai, Eska, and a deck. And as he's laughing, you all, I'm not going to make you make perception checks. You're going to see what's going on here. Shit's about to get serious. What you see now at this point, Mawu, his armor, it begins to shift. And you all kind of expected this from the get-go. This has happened with almost every Koldarian soldier you have fought. His body slowly begins to shift and contort. His armor almost begins to burst at the seams as his body grows even thicker. He doesn't seem to get taller by any means, but his body begins to become much more muscular. His calves begin to grow. His biceps, his chest, everything about him, muscle begins to just continue growing. But as it does so, Eckerd, I'm just going to go ahead and say this. As a holy man, you feel nothing but evil just burst out of this man as he begins to transform. And Ecker, with you being probably the closest at this point, as this is going on, the wagon right next to him, as he is transforming, you see that the wagon begins to shake violently as this powerful evil aura begins to swirl around his body as he's shifting. And as he's shifting, Ecker, make me a perception. You're gonna, I want Ecker to make this perception. Oh, a 20. Not natural, but a 20. That's perfect. Eckert, as he's walking towards the others, he seems to somewhat be ignoring you for the most part. That wagon, it shakes violently. And sooner or later, the wagon soon bursts to the side by this powerful force. The wagon explodes into several pieces. The tarp on the wagon is cut and shredded by pure evil energy that seeps from this individual's body. And as the wagon becomes shredded, Sam, you now can see this individual walking towards your allies. The cart is now gone. It's in pieces. It does not fly to hurt anyone, but for more, much more for show to show you all how powerful he is. He's doing this as a way to show you he is not a regular soldier from Koldar. But with a perception of 20 Eckert, you can spot along the side of his armor where his arms are. Some of the armor begins to burst. His arm guards, you see fur begin to grow. This human is no longer a human. You begin to see these weird stripes grow along his fur-like body. And what begins to come out of the fur, you see this orange and black fur. His head begins to shift and almost grow out of his helmet. The helmet's still on. But now his face begins to contort, and you see this face of a tiger. His hands begin to shift, and his thumbs burst on the bottom side of his hands. And what you see before you is this tiger-like humanoid now standing in your presence. This vile energy, Eckerd. You can feel how evil he is, whether you're a paladin or not. 
what stands before you is a rakshasha of a shy. And as he begins to walk closer, he grins with his new tiger-like body. He's still a humanoid, but his hands are, think of human hands, except where your thumb is. It's on the opposite of your hand, side of your hand. So the thumbs are on the bottom of his hands now. It's really weird, but he has the face and body of a tiger that's still humanoid, but he is now muscular and he continues to chuckle and he holds the great sword in one hand and he slowly brings it into his other, gripping it with both hands. <laughs> Mawu the Wicked serves Mori Tai. You shall feel the corruption flowing through your veins with your passing. You shall be food for Moritai. Now come, warriors of Tirister, show me how strong you are. And with that, he just slams his greatsword down into the ground and he just stares up at Kai who has the next turn in this round, and he gives you a grin. I'll be the gentleman. You all may have the first go. Show me what you are capable of. <laughs> and he is skipping his turn. It is now Kai's turn. Oh, he arrogant as fuck. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> So with that, Kai, you see this man shifts into what's called a rakshasha of a shy. This tiger-looking man staring you down. Eska has seen his true form before, which is why she was frightened by him. But it's at the point in time Eska knows that there is no fleeing. You, she has to fight, so she is going to fight with all of her strength despite being afraid of this guy. But Kai... What are you doing? And also, I know I know Jake's in the back right now. As a player, Jake's like a fucking Rakshasha. Really right now? Really, bro? <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> Lino ain't got shit on us. <laughs> so, Kai. I, I, Kai's going to fall back a little bit. Right there. <laughs> Kai said, that wagon exploded? Oh, hell no. That's some DBZ shit right there. Uh, I mean, I'm a ranged character anyway. Gotta, <laughs> gotta play, to, play to my strengths, all right? I'm gonna cast Ensnaring Strike and I'm gonna shoot my longbow at it. So go ahead and shoot your longbow. Oh. For a 12, as you shoot your longbow, your arrow goes flying. The first uh, arrow, oh, a 12 and then an 11. The first arrow goes flying towards him. And as it does so, it just it pierces the side of his armor. And it just drops to the ground. Both arrows seem to snap as they hit him. And he slowly looks to the side at Kai. Is that all you've got? Uh, you're not rolling bless. You need to roll a d4 with every one oh. of those attacks. <laughs> that is true. This is true. Okay. Don't this forget. True. Don't Hold forget. On. Jake's okay. like, don't gimp yourself. Okay. So that's actually a, a 16 all the right, one. so the 16 and the second one would be a 13. Unfortunately, okay. both still miss. Uh -huh. <laughs> How much armor does this guy get? I'm, I'm <laughs> real tight right now. <laughs> he said I'm real oh, tight man. right now. All right, Kai, uh, at that point, what's Luna doing? Uh, first off, I'm going to respond to him after he asked me, is that all you got? And I'm just going to say, nah, I still got a full quiver. <laughs> all right uh, and luna luna's right next to yalar what 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 is luna doing luna being an animal she can sense the vile evil that's power coming from this individual and luna can tell he is the most dangerous enemy that you've come across at this point in time luna's gonna fall back <laughs> okay probably a smart choice at this point yeah Luna retreats. At this point, it is now Eska and a Dex turn. Eska takes her katana, and as she does so, she begins to ready herself. You will not live past this day, Mawu. And as she prepares herself to cast a spell, the hobgoblin stares at this Rakshasha. He has no idea what a Rakshasha is. He just knows that this guy looks like a tiger. 
and he just takes out his long sword in both hands. You killed innocent Zogunians. You shall not live past this day, vile fiend. In the name of Zogun, you shall be struck down by my blade for my brothers and sisters. And he's going to charge forward with his long sword full charge towards him. He's not going to be able to make it to an attack, but he rushes past Eska and past Yalar. He's not able to make it all the way there. At this point, Eska, she quickly holds a hand up and she's going to begin casting a spell and she is quickly shooting a scorching ray, three rays at this individual. Her first scorching ray is a critical hit for a total of 27. The second scorching ray is a 10. That will miss the third scorching ray will hit with a 23. And as she hits with the first scorching ray, she deals crit- critical damage of 10 points of fire damage. And the second attack misses, but the third attack will hit for an additional nine points of damage. So 19 points of damage. The fire, the scorching ray slam up against him. And as each does so, he doesn't seem to be all that affected by it. The fire quickly sizzles out and he just slowly looks up at Eska as her three attacks just slam up against his body. It still does damage, but he just doesn't seem to be all that worried about it. He looks up at her. (laughs) Really, Eska? Really? Is that all you're going to throw at me? I'm giving you all a chance here before I make my move. And this is what you show me? Weak. Sam, it is now your turn. Well, he doesn't see me. So... I mean, we're, we're going. We're going for it. So I'm going to come up right behind this fucker. All right. So you burst through the bushes and the trees from the shadows. And as you do so, he does not notice you just yet. So you're going to get a surprise attack on him. So you get an advantage on your attack. So go ahead and make an attack roll with your rapier, looks like. With an advantage, you can add your bless if you want. Yeah, 1d4. <clears throat> All right, a 1. So your rapier with a 17. And as you go to pierce him with your rapier, he just moves to the side rather quickly. It is surprising to you, Sam, how fast he is in this armor with how muscular he is. He's almost the size of you, Sam, if not if not more muscular, because I believe Sam's almost seven feet tall, right? Yeah, he's a little bit taller than that. Yeah, about seven feet tall. Yeah, so uh, you are not able to hit him with your rapier, but you still have a dagger or whatever your second weapon is if you're trying to attack him with it. The 17 is not high enough. All right, your dagger is a se- uh, the 17 again, uh, unfortunately, even with an advantage. Your dagger, you go to pierce him with your dagger, and he quickly steps to the side as well, avoiding both of with an your 18? attacks. Yes. Ugh. And he just looks at you face to face, and he snarls in your face, Sam. Uh, I see the rogue has made himself known. <laughs> Full of surprises, aren't we, Eska? Anything else, Sam? I think that's about it for you. Yeah, that's it. All right. Galar, it's your turn. What are you doing? Uh, I had a quick question. Yeah. If I were to cast this cantrip, Toll of the Dead, would that break my concentration? Oh, okay. No, because you don't have a current you don't currently have a concentration spell up, do you? Oh, uh, the shadow blade is a concentration. Oh, is the toll of the dead a concentration spell? Uh it does not say. Then it will not. You can only have one concentration spell up at a time. Okay. So toll of the dead is not a concentration spell, therefore you would not break your concentration. Okay. Uh I will do that. Cast that at second level. All and- right. So uh, he must be a DC spell, a wisdom saving throw of 14. All right. Uh, is it a fail half damage kind of thing or is it full damage? Because I rolled, I, well, I wrote a, I wrote 17 total, but I don't know if he still takes damage or not from Toll of the Dead. It do doesn't it. say, I don't see it says. Okay. So if he avoids it, he completely avoids it then. Yeah, that's what it looks like. All right. So it does nothing. 
your Toll the Dead spell seems to go off. And as it does so, it doesn't seem to do much to Mawu the Wicked. He doesn't even feel it. Toll the Dead, just so you know, is a wisdom saving throw. So if he made his wisdom saving throw, he takes no damage. Okay. Yep, I did with a 17. I just wasn't sure if it was like a half damage kind of thing. But if it's wisdom, that makes sense. All right. Yalar, do you make a movement anywhere else? Or what else? Uh, I'm going to move closer to him. Okay. Eckerd, it is now your it is now your turn. You see everyone just strikes at him. The only one that really seems to get a hit on him is Eska. What are you doing? Eckerd charges in. No. Okay. I don't know from where your kind thought it was ever capable of coming out of the darkness where you belong. And he begins to kind of point his halberd towards him and it crackles with radiant energy. He is going to go ahead and cast Guiding Bolt. Um, He is going to go ahead and cast this. Yep, just at first level. Okay, 14. Add your blessing or your bless if you'd like. I don't think uh, even with an 18, I wouldn't hit, right? No, you wouldn't actually. Okay. All right. So you got a total of a 15. Yeah, that wouldn't hit. He will move in at this point and he will action surge. All right. Action surge. Push yourself to the limits. Mm. Get an additional You're just action. close enough. He's now flanked. Yes, he is. I'm going to cast inflict wounds on him at second level. All right. Inflict wounds for That's advantage. a 22. All right. That will hit. And that will deal 12 plus, uh, it's only casting it at 3d10 right now for whatever reason, but it casts an additional d10 for 15 necrotic damage. All right. You go and quickly touch this Rakshasha of a shy, And as you do so, you provide it some necrotic damage. And at this point, this seems to be the first attack that he uh, necessarily feels. And he slowly looks over at you. And he just has this wide grin on his face as if he was Yajiro Hanma from Baki. He just gives you this grin. Ah! The first to do tickling damage to me. (laughs) All right. Anything else, Eckerd? I am able to use a bonus action. Yes, you can. Since you action surged. He will summon his spiritual weapon. He's going to put it right here, Ryan. So I'm going to go ahead and draw it real quick. All right. So we now have Sam and Eckerd on two sides of Mawu the Wicked. The spiritual sword is now on another side of Mawu. So one more side and he'll be fully surrounded. So the spiritual weapon rolls uh, 19. I think that's the 19, right? To hit it? Mm-hmm. 19 right. did. As, actually, as, it's technically, a, it's well, yeah, it's a 19, actually. Yeah, you're correct. So five oh, force damage if that hits. Okay. The 19, the spiritual blade shifts and appears behind Mawu, and as it goes to slam down into him, the sword, it stops at his armor. It's not able to pass through the armor. Oh, it didn't hit. It did not hit. The oh, 19. my God. Uh, Eckert has done all of 15 necrotic damage to him, Sam. He just looks at him and he goes, you are truly powerful evil. One that must be stopped here and now. <laughs> I serve Emperor Ball and we of Cold Dar serve Moritai. Corruption itself seeps through a shy. We shall not stop there. Tirister will be our next victim once all of a shy has been conquered. Let that be known, cleric. <laughs> it, it seems now. it is now my turn. And he grabs the hilt of his greatsword, which he stabbed into the ground. And he just slowly pulls it out. Let us see how you all do. And no, wait, he can we get another chance? The great sword. <laughs> and he shifts his body. He's going to five foot step towards Yalar. Not enough to where he leaves your threat radius. And as he five foot step, he takes his great sword 
and he swings it violently at Sam Laundren. Sam, what is your AC? I can't remember. I rolled a 19. He hit. All right. As he hits you with his great sword, he deals, let's see here, 11 points of slashing damage. Now make me a fortitude saving throw. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not uh, that's. I'm in 3.5 edition rules. <laughs> I was like, There's no constitution. Constitution saving. Throw. My bad. Mm. Oof. A ten. Okay, that's not good. Hey, Remember, you I can add that. Uh, add a D four. Yeah. yeah. Don't forget to add the four. Well, in this case, it's not going to matter <laughs> with a ten. So you wrote a total of a twelve. Unfortunately, you failed your Constitution save. So after he strikes you. With his great sword, you feel burning in your gut. It is something you've seen before, Sam. You are affected by wyvern poison. You take 15 points of poison damage. Oh. And as he swings his great sword at you, he spins it around and he slams it up against Yalar. Your next turtle. I rolled an 18. Does that hit you, Yalar? Um, as far as the Shield. I forgot. I forgot to write that down. How much did that add to my AC? A shield is going to be a plus two to AC. Okay, that does not hit. All right. So he is able to or unable to hit you with his attack, and he has a third attack, which he's going to swing it. And this one, however, will hit you. And th- I'm pretty sure this is a 23. Oh yes. Okay. So with that, you'll be taking nine points of slashing damage. Make me a constitution save. Oh, even with a even with the bless, it's not going to do anything with a seven. I figured as much. You'll be taking, I'm rolling online dice for this. You'll be taking 18 points of poison damage. All right. That is his turn. And he just chuckles. <laughs> I'm going easy on you. Is this all you've got? Kai, it is now your turn. I was going to shift there, and I'm just going to shoot. All right. Hope for the best. Or die like the rest. <laughs> 26 will hit. 26 will hit. Also, make that, <laughs> if that 26 goes to a 21, will it still hit? Yes, it will hit. Okay, then I do 18 damage with that attack. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because I am a sharpshooter. Oh, okay. All right, so you uh, deal your damage. You pierce his armor with your next arrow, and he just he just winces slightly. Ugh, that one I felt. <laughs> that matter, third, but I wanted to roll it. With your 13 and a 4, that's unable. That's not going to hit with your second attack, unfortunately. That's fine. I got one arrow in there. I'm good. <laughs> I can t- I can die happy at this point. Uh, at this point, Esco's turn, and she's going to shout out at second level. She is going to cast Witch Bolt at this Rakshasha, and as she does so, the Witch Bolt, let's see here. Will that hit? It is an 18. It is not going to hit, unfortunately. As the Witch Bolt strikes his armor, it just fades away. And she kind of just curses at Mawu. At this point, a deck, he rushes forward next to Sam and he jumps up into his air with his long sword. Die, vile fiend! And as he does so, he's going to make a roll. As he slashes down, I rolled a three. His long sword oh. just clashes up against Mawu's shoulder and it does nothing and just looks at him. A three. <laughs> Pathetic. A deck, no. Sam, it's your turn. You gotta at least get one attack in before he dies. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. I just want to yell out, uh, I will get through your armor. All right, so advantage. you have advantage. 23 will hit. Oh, what did I do that? Oops. Well, that's fine. Uh, we'll just say that's what you roll for your dagger if you're attacking with your dagger as well. Yeah, I am going to attack with my dagger. Um, so seven piercing damage with your rapier. And then my dagger is 1d4. Forget being that he is flanked yep. you have advantage you get your sneak attack on your first hit yep and your dagger does seven piercing damage okay 
All right, for an additional seven sneak damage. Mm, nice. Fif- Fifteen damage. So team, you... we're gonna we're gonna hard need uh, roll twenty to stop rolling ones. <laughs> like yeah. it's it's embarrassingly low damage right now. All right, give me a second. I'm googling how to cheat on roll twenty. <laughs> Real. It was that code I put in. Definitely wasn't working for us. <laughs> they put the contra code in, guys. As you do so, you quickly in succession you stab with your rapier and your dagger and you pierce the rook shasha's back ma with the wicked he just uh, tickles <laughs> yalar it is now your turn i'm going to attack with my shadow blade yeah all yeah. right so go ahead and attack with your shadow blade then i rolled that was a 23 yep that hits the 23 will hit so what is the damage for your shadow blade 2d8. Ugh. Oof, another five and a one. So six points of da- What kind of damage is that with your Shadow Blade? Is it a, a different type of damage or is it just normal weapon, is... like slashing damage? Force damage. Force damage. Okay. Yeah. Six so force magical. damage. All right. Perfect. So for six force damage, you cut up alongside Mawu and he just looks at Yalar. Ah, the total finally strikes. You remind me. Of a turtle we captured, the great turtle spirit, Tioga. <laughs> Just like we took in Tioga, I shall take you in, turtle. All right, Yalar, anything else from you, or is that it? For now, that is it. Okay. All right, it is now Eckert's turn. You are far more powerful than we initially thought. True. But we do have you flanked. And with that, he is going to hit him with a guiding bolt cast at second level. At advantage, I'd say. Oh, it doesn't matter. 18. Uh, hold on, I can roll better. my d4, d4, d4. You better give me a two. That's right. <laughs> That's a 21. <laughs> that hits. That will hit. All right, I got to roll an additional, uh, was it d6? I think it is. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> All right. Uh, one. So 15 radiant magical damage. So your radiant damage bursts into the side of Mawu. He just hisses. Ah, radiance. You clerics have always annoyed me. All hmm. right. Anything? You bastardized demonic forces have always done the same for me. He'll take a five foot step. And uh, with his five foot step, he will then cast healing word as a bonus action. Okay. And he is going to cast it at first level and he's going to cast it on Yalar. Okay. So Yalar will be healed. Give me just a second here. For 1d4 plus four plus an additional, because I am a life cleric, plus. An additional three. So you're getting seven no matter what, you are. You're getting eight, you are all together. Hey, that's better than what I was before. And at that point, Eckert just kind of stares deep into the creature's eyes. By the end of this, I will have you kneel before me. Is that so? Mm, you forget. It is my turn to strike. And as he does so, he begins to spin his blade. And we will end this episode of Taverns and Caverns Side Stories there. Thank you everyone for tuning in to Taverns and Caverns. Before we go, you can follow me on Twitter at HaphazardDM. Yeah, uh, my name is Jake Life. You can find me on Twitter at JK Life. You can also find me on Instagram at the same. Yeah, I'm Rod, also Rodimus. I mean, I guess I'll go ahead and plug my uh, social media. Maybe it uh, might encourage me to actually use it more. You can follow me on Instagram at uh, Rodimus83 and on Twitter at Rodimus7901. And I'm Patrick. Thank you, Hap, again for having us and inviting us to this. And you can find me on Twitch at Casper, spelled with a K, uh, the Wicked, W-I-K-I-D. And you can also find me on Twitter and the same thing. I'm Mark. Thank you, Pat, for letting me experience my first time on d and I actually quite enjoyed myself, even though I was quiet for the most part. But uh, <laughs> I have nothing to plug. 
and social media wise. All right, cool. Well, no problem. That's okay. But those are all of our players. You can find them all the Twitter or Instagram handles that they've mentioned. And again, you can find Taverns and Caverns at tavernscaverns.com or Taverns Caverns on Twitter. Thank you so much, everyone. And you all have a wonderful day or night. <laughs>